says you're not subbed. What the motherfucker give me that? What the? What the? What? what why? If you aren't subbed, sub now at 10k subs. I dye this fucking hair gray. Sub now. It is your boy Veli. Two eyes back with another video, and today I have my everybody's everything documentary review. And it's gonna be pretty in depth. But before that, you guys already know I have to dive into the Instagram shout outs to my most recent Instagram followers. So if you guys want to be featured in this, just go follow me on Instagram at I'm Veli and I'll have you in the video in the beginning as so. Also, if you guys haven't liked the video, please make sure to do that as well. It really helps the channel grow, helps the video get out to more people. Thank you guys so much for the support. And also, <laughs> remember at 10K subs, I dye my hair gray. So if you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel, if you guys enjoyed this video, hopefully at the end you guys subscribe and join the Shitternet Army. But let's dive into the IG shout out before this review. And yes, these are all the beautiful faces of IG. The new followers. Thank you so much, you guys, for not just following just to follow but being actually very active watching my stories being active in the uh, polls I really love you guys love you guys so much and yes here's everybody go support everybody and yeah got a new profile picture and everything <laughs> let's go and let's dive into this intro we have a lot to talk about. All right, so this movie, I actually really enjoyed my watch. In the beginning, I can't lie, when I saw that it was actually two hours, I was like, there's no way that this documentary is two hours long, but I actually enjoyed my watch a lot, guys. It was actually very enjoyable and funny and sad and actually pretty intriguing throughout the entire thing i can't even lie to you guys um it was a lot of things that grabbed me like the cold open start um with uh you know the classic type shot behind the artist before they go on stage or the comedian before they go on stage the classic shot of them uh behind their backs and stuff like the and then they're walking to the stage, and then it shows them, and then the crowd and stuff. Uh, it did that with Peep, and uh, it was actually a very amazing shot. He had the jacket on and everything. I actually really liked that. And it also, um, through, it started off at, at first um, with his grandfather's narrations. Um, I thought that it only be in the beginning, but it actually was throughout the entire movie. So, it was actually pretty intriguing to have his grandfather be the narrator throughout the entire movie. And I actually really liked it because it's very relatable to my relationship with my grandfather. And I don't know, it was just, it was almost as if my grandfather was talking to me through the movie screen. It was, it was very touching to have that. I, I really loved that touch. That touch of having his grandfather narrate. Man, I really liked that. I really, I really did. And it, while his grandfather was narrating, it was also touching and, on his character and building up his character and having you focus on how he treated Peep 
as well as his experience from Peep growing up around him and stuff. It's actually pretty uh, put. It's put together very well, in my opinion. No matter what, like conspiracies have come out afterwards or what people have said about certain parts of it, I feel this part of it, um, the way they included his grandfather in this t- uh, this touching way, uh, I felt was put together very well, very well. Um, uh, it starts off uh, with his journey with Schema Posse. I'm talking like directly after his grandfather's narration with uh his pink hair, you know, with the vest, you know. Um the short pink hair, you know, like I really like that. It uh as it's doing that, it's showing like um interviews uh and points of views from different people in Schema Posse and their experiences with Peep during his uh reign with schema and even after he uh decided to part ways um including ghost man and that that's uh it was very good to have that uh that also in the mix because their how they saw it wasn't the same at all as how pete probably saw it they probably saw it as like damn peeps bailing out on us ah oh, and people seeing it as i'm just trying to further my career i'm trying to move forward and get my shit you know trying to get my shit cracking off you know and i love how they bring up uh with peeps leaving of schema um majority of the people afterwards left too like pretty much the whole group just stopped after Peep left, and, uh, that was very interesting to know, because I didn't know that at all, um, I always thought Peep had it as, like, a little side thing or something, I didn't know that Peep was going, like, to different groups like that, and I don't know, I don't know how I feel about it, and I also don't know if it was put together as, um, properly as, most fans would want it to be put together as, but, um, yeah, it was also very interesting to see how they were describing how they all lived together and pooped out music, that was very intriguing to hear, and it was also very intriguing to hear about, like, uh, one of the leaders, seeing, like, new people and stuff once Peep's, like, first show popped off, like, Peep's first show pops off, and his, um, his rise to, uh, fame just grows rapidly after that show, and people are hitting him up, it's new people, and the guy's telling them, like, hey, why do you think these new people are here, and... He said, like, a day later, Peep was out. He was gone. And that's where Golf Boy, ki- uh, Golf Boy Click comes into play. And I'm like, wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, they described, they went very, I was very surprised with how in-depth they went into it. And that's honestly why I kind of kept away from, like, the stories and stuff from Peep and Tracy and... Ghost Man and stuff. I just kept away and was patient to the, uh, this documentary. And it, it was, it was, it was, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know, guys. It was very surprising. I know this is very serious right now, guys. I know, I know I haven't been like cracking any jokes or anything, but uh, yeah, man, this documentary really touched me, man. It, it was very relatable. It, it was, it was, more, it was way more relatable than I, I ever thought that I would be to people. Like, I already thought that I was super relatable to him, but, man, I am so, Like, we almost have the same exact fucking life. It's crazy. It's fucking crazy, man. Um, it also implies, after Peeps, like, that, that first show that he has, like, 
his confidence like skyrockets like that's so relatable like after his first show it's like okay i know i know that i can do this shit and it's it's so crazy because like after my first uh first time hearing peep the first one after that i saw it go go good and i saw that i could do like series and i can be funny and have everybody laugh off of multiple things I live off of multiple videos. Once I saw that I can do that, I was like, okay. I got it in the bag. I understand what I have to do. I just have to remain consistent. And I have to remain positive. That's all I have to fucking do. And Peep understood that shit. And man, dude, it was so cool to see. I don't know. It was so cool to see like where he was coming from. Uh, in doing that, it it was very, it was very cool to see, like even his confidence wasn't all the way there until he had all those fans in one house show, all screaming his lyrics. You know, sometimes I feel that way until I upload the video and you guys are all in the premiere, fucking screaming the lyrics, or typing the lyrics super fucking fast to my intro or something like. It was so relatable, man. But, yeah, uh, I loved how they dived in to um, also how Peep, in a very similar way, did everything with the click, like Goth Boy click. They, he did everything with them pretty much the same as he did with Schema. Uh, but the thing is, people was signed, I think. Uh, he was signed, and it was a problem because the label is looking at Peep and Peep only. And Peep and his friends are looking like, yo, what about us? Like, you know? And it was very, it was very refreshing to dive into that, oh man, I have to do my own shit. Oh man, I can't take care of these guys forever. Like some of some of those guys were mad at him when he had to depart from the click, golf boy click. When he had to depart from them and move to London, I believe. Um, and he was doing his own thing, and they were actually mad at him because he wasn't paying for the house that uh they all were staying in, which was his house. That uh, because he wasn't giving them his clothes, or because they he he stopped taking care of grown ass men. That's what happens when you allow people to leech off of you, and that's what happens when you allow people um, next to you uh, without having some type of worth uh, work ethic. Like it is just spell it is is it's mixing up bad energy. No matter how you put it. Um, but yes, I also loved how they put that. Like, it may not always be like as pretty as you think. If you're diving into this record label type of thing. Or if you're trying to go solo. Like, maybe you should think of that from the beginning almost. If you're going to be a solo artist or a solo creator. Don't drag these people along with as happy as they make you and it honestly shows how happy they made him honestly it was crazy for them to also dive into him and tracy's um well they really didn't dive into it but they implied it because i'm pretty sure tracy and peep pretty much did everything on the internet themselves they talked about it out loud themselves but um Peep said uh, it was cool seeing uh, their, the point of views from both of his former girlfriends and brothers and uh, his mom. And it, it was very cool to see the perspectives from them because those were a lot of people who spent a lot of time with him. Like, a lot of time. Like, I know the clique and posse spent a lot of time with him, but... 
These are people who know secrets that he wouldn't want to tell those people, you know? Like, like it was very cool to see their point of view. But, um, yeah, it was, uh, speaking of their point of view, they were uh, bringing up how he wanted to bring Tracy and the clique on tour with him, you know, before his passing um, as a goodbye, you know? And that was honestly really sad to hear uh, that he, it, I don't know. It sucks to hear that him and Tracy and the clique ended on like bad terms and he ended up passing away in the middle of all of that. But it's really good to know that he really wanted to end on a positive note and he didn't know the end was coming. So he just... <laughs> He wanted to be positive regardless, and it's really heartfelt, man. It's really, really heartfelt, but they did also a great job in touching on everybody's feelings on his passing and how it happened, and it was very interesting to see, like, them cover, like, the controversy around it, too. I didn't think that they would do that. But they did. They covered the controversy around it. Like this, it was this guy in the clique um, talking about motherfuckers on this live talking about they he killed them and stuff. I mean, when you think about it, they're diving into it. I mean, people sleep for four or five hours. What are y'all doing? I mean, if my boy is, especially if he's doing drugs, is sleep for thirty minutes. And he has a show tonight. Or uh, we're on a tour bus together and he is knocked out. I'm waking him up like, yo! Get your ass up! Type shit. You know? We'll dive into the conspiracies later and shit. This is my review on the documentary, okay? (laughs) And, yeah. um, How they dove into that, like, both sides. Like, the guy from Schema talking about, I wasn't there, so... You know, but somebody somebody sleeping for four to five hours. Okay, I get an hour. That's even a little weird, but four to five hours. You know, come on. That's a whole shift. That's a whole fucking shift at work, my nigga. That's that's, uh, how long it takes for me to edit a first time hearing uh, like part four when I put like 10 songs in a video or something. An album reaction. Like, bruh. But they did a great job touching on that and his mom's reaction and how the management had to contact her and stuff. They did a very good job at that. I I didn't cry, um, but I remember having, like, frogs in my throat throughout the entire thing. It wasn't just the end. Um, It was throughout the entire thing. Like, the it was very touching, man. Especially those, those those moments where his granddad was talking. That that at the end when his granddad was talking, that that was man. It was so fucking touching. It's like I don't want to get emotional. I've been emotional. For the past goddamn week. I haven't uploaded in seven days. I'm back, guys. But this was a very touching movie, man. And it was two hours. And it dove into a lot. And I felt like it could have dove into a little more. It was some songs I had to skip because I haven't heard. (laughs) But for the most part, man, this was a, a... Fun, fun watch, man. Super fun. I want to give you guys a full reaction on here, but it'd be heavily edited. Um, I want to make a Patreon for people who are down to pay monthly. I know people can't pay. Um, Hopefully, I'll be able to, like, work something out and put something in Discord or something. I have no clue. We'll work it out some way, guys. Oh, my gosh. 
I need to get something to drink, man. But this has been my review on everybody's um, everything. It was a very good watch, a very good documentary for me. Um, the perspectives of pretty much everyone around his life was very interesting, especially from like the the posse and his girlfriends. Like those those point of views were very interesting. Uh, interesting, interesting. It's been a week, guys. Very interesting to see. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It has been your boy, Veli. Two eyes. See you guys in the next one. Bones up next.